Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. Now we're going to go over some more advanced type of problems or reactions that alkenes go through. This is the last uh, video for the alkene section. And then after this, we have to go over alkynes. It's its own video. And then we're going to do something known as oxidation, ozonolysis. And it is part with alkene, but it's a completely different philosophy, different theory, different things to think about. Uh, and it brings us into what's known as roadmap problems. So this covers the last of the reaction types for alkenes that you really need to focus in on. And, and then, you know, at this point, I suggest that you, you get this down, you master all the alkene stuff, then you move into the alkyne. You'll find that if you have a good understanding of alkene, alkyne is very easy because it's the same thing, but it happens twice for the most part. Um, and so you'll see that alkynes are very easy to learn. And then that last video is going to be about ozonolysis and something known as roadmap problems. And like I said, it's a completely different topic. It's independent of everything else that flows for the chapter. Okay, so that's it. Let's get started with this here. Now, I have to, let me warn you that it's not that this is hard, but there's a lot of things to think about, okay? So, um, we'll go through it one by one. So, these are the things we're going to do. There are four types of considerations, and we're going to go one at a time, and then we'll do a bunch of problems to make sure we get it down. The first thing is alkenes can actually react with themselves. So, for example, if I have an alkene, and I react it with H+, plus, then you would break the double bond, make a carbocation, right? Just like we know, this would be primary and secondary, so secondary carbocation, right? But what if this is all we have? What if I wrote two of these? Well, then the one that's positive <clears throat> could be attacked by the one that's not positive. So these two can come after each other, where this one can go after that one. Now think of the logic. The double bond is going to go after the carbocation, this is primary, this is secondary. So our goal is to get a secondary carbocation again. So let's track it. This is the yellow carbon, and this is the blue carbon, and this is the red carbon. So at this point, we've connected the red carbon to the yellow carbon, right? So here's the yellow carbon. And then the yellow carbon is connected to the blue, and the blue has a methyl. So here's the blue carbon. So we've consolidated. We've brought them together, and by making the double bond go from the yellow to the red, that means that this is positive right there. See that? So this is known as one alkene reacting with another, and you get something that looks like this. Now what would you do? Well, from here, there's a few options. And you can have, let's say, water, and then water would come in to that location. That's a possibility. So now you have an OH here. I'll write step 2 minus H plus. Or you could even have, let's say, let me move this arrow this way. But you could also have just heat. And that means that a base, so we had an acid, a base can simply pull off a beta H, let's say from here, and a double bond can form. So you can get a double bond right there. And that's also possible. So how it closes up, it depends on the problem. Usually a problem like this, they give you the start and they give you the end. They say show the mechanism. Okay, so many things can happen, but this is an example of one. All right, now this is where two alkenes are reacting with each other. Now let me give you another example. Here's example number two. Let's say I have an alkene like this, and I have an alkene like that, and I want these two to react with each other. Okay, so we have acid. The first thing you say is, okay, this is primary and secondary. This is primary and tertiary. So which one is going to break first? Which one reacts faster? And I hope you're saying the one that has a tertiary position, right? Because that means it's going to be a more stable carbocation. So this would begin by breaking the tertiary. The tertiary is the winner because it's the highest degree. So the highest degree breaks first. So now we know out of these two alkenes, the top one becomes a carbocation because that'll give us the most stable carbocation. And that means it's the fastest hill to go over, right, to get there. So here we are. And now we take an alkene that we didn't break. And now it goes after that positive carbon. So now we have this right here. And now let's say this is the green carbon right here. Well, it is now attached on right there. This is the green carbon. 
and let's say this is the blue carbon, blue carbon, and then the blue carbon has a methyl, and then it's positive. So you see that? We've now done the same analysis. Here's primary and secondary. We want the primary to attach on so that we get a secondary cation. Okay, so now you've learned two things. When you have two different alkenes, you know who to break first, and then when you bring it together, you know what type of carbocation you would form. Okay, nothing new. Now let's say this is in water, so then we can have H2O come in, and we get to the end right there, OH. Step two is minus H plus. So that would be the answer. Now, if you have H plus in water, you might say, well, how do I know I'm not just doing a, D, uh, a hydro, uh, I'm sorry, uh, an acid catalyzed hydration reaction? And so the, you could do that. So you can have an acid catalyzed hydration, so they have to give some kind of emphasis. Usually it's a high concentration of alkenes. So if I write, like over here, two, then that means I have a, a much more a larger concentration of alkenes. If I load up the environment with alkene, then it's more likely they'll come after each other. This is not something you have to guess. They are going to give you some hint, whether it be the formula. Maybe they'll give you the formula of this product, and you'll have to figure out what they're looking for. Or maybe they'll give you the answer and say, show the mechanism. So don't worry about how to know. You just know that this can happen, okay? So this is something that can happen, and that's the first thing I want to talk about. All right, the next thing, uh, actually, it kind of stays in the same category. Okay, so here's another example. Let's take a look at this one now. Now, it's kind of similar to what we're doing here, where we're having two alkenes attack each other, right? But in this case, what we're doing is we have a leaving group that we're going to create and alkenes to deal with. Now, I want to tell you that th this OH, um, when you see the acid with these alcohols, uh, you, you can do two things. One is you could break double bonds. Whoops. You can have a double bond break and go after the acid, but that's not what we're going to do here. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to pronate one of the OHs. So remember in, in the alkene part one, we said we could pronate alcohols and make them leave. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is which one of these two can become a carbocation, which molecule? Now look, this one here is primary, but not only primary, it's next to a double bond, so it's allyl. Whereas this one is just primary, it's not next to a double bond. So if I have to choose which one becomes a carbocation, then it would actually be this one here. We would pronate it. It would become positive after it leaves. Notice how I do the arrow. Remember I taught you? You could do the bond arrow, and that means that the O is getting protonated and leaving at the same time. That's what we're doing there. So the O left, it's gone, and now we're left with this carbocation, plus we have over here this one that didn't react yet, right? And so what happens next is the alkene, now it's the same as what we did before, and one alkene is going to go after the other carbon that's positive. So this right here is primary and tertiary, right? So this can go after that carbon, and now we fuse this red and this green together. So we wind up getting a system like this, and here's the red carbon, and now it's fused to the green carbon, and then you have the rest of the system, like that. Okay? So what we did is we took this double bond in yellow, and we made it connect here between those two. And that would make this carbon here positive. The one that's tertiary lost its electron. It's now positive. And so this is something that we can get to. And then from here, we would just make an alkene, right? So the question is which side. And in this point in the semester, it doesn't matter. But the carbocation is alpha. And if you pull the left or right side, you could do either one. Let's say we pull from the right side. We pull that H, and we make a double bond. And this gives us an answer. Now, again, I want to emphasize something to you. These are advanced type problems or reactions. And I'm showing it to you so you get a sense of how it works. But they would never ask you to just answer like that from up here. They have to give you direction. They have to give you an answer. They have to somehow guide you in your thinking because otherwise you would never know what to do. Okay? So just realize that.